God bless you, friends. It's Pastor Timeline of the Fruit Church, Minneapolis. I'm so glad to be in the space with you on this Resurrection Sunday, 2021. Wherever you are, whether you're at home or uh, in your bed, I'm glad to be able to come in your space once again and share the Word of God. This, this Sunday is a special Sunday as we celebrate the great sacrifice of our Lord. But more than anything, we celebrate the victory of his resurrection in our lives. So today I'm going to share a sermon entitled Resurrecting Love. Resurrecting Love, because love just keeps on resurrecting in our lives. But before I do, I want to send you to Pastor C.J. Robinson as he ministers in worship on this Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you, we adore you, and we lift you up, and we exalt your name. Father, we thank you for this time of worship that you've allowed us to come together and to worship your name. Father, we lift our voice and say, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. We give you glory, God, yeah, yeah. We will worship you, Lord. Oh, oh how we love you. Oh, how we bless you. Oh, how we worship you, oh Lord. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship you, our Lord. Oh, how we Oh, how we praise you, Lord. Oh, how we worship you, our Lord. Oh, how we love you. And oh, how we praise you. Hey, and oh, how we worship you. I need everybody to worship God just right now. Come on. Use the fruit of your lips. Come on. Use the fruit of your lips. We worship you, Jesus. Hey, we bow down before you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes. We lift our hands to you, God. We bow ourselves down. Yes, God. We bow ourselves down. We bow ourselves down before you. Hey, we bow ourselves down. Oh, how we love you. Hey, and oh, how we praise you. And oh, how we worship you. And oh, how we praise you, and oh, how we worship you, our Lord, yes. oh, how we love you, and oh, how we praise you, and oh, how we love you, God, oh, And we will praise you, God. <laughs> and we will praise you, God. <laughs> and we will praise you, God. <laughs> oh, Lord. We will worship you. <laughs> we will worship you, God. <laughs> we will worship you we will worship you yeah. we will bow down we will bow down we will bow down we 
will bow down before you. Before you, we will bow down. We will bow down, Lord. We will bow down. We will bow down. We will bow down. We will bow down. Now, everybody, come on. I need you to lift your voice and worship him now. On. I need you to worship him right now. Let him hear the fruit of your lips. Let him feel you. Let him feel you. Let him fill you with his grace. Let him fill you with his mercy. Oh, we will worship you. We will worship you. We will worship you. We'll worship you. We'll worship you. We worship you. We bow down. We bow down. Father, we bow down. Yeah. Oh, do, do. Yes. We will bow down. Yes. So, Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Hey, Father, we love you. And Father, we bless you. Hey, Father, we bless you. Father, Father, Father. somebody that's desperate for his presence that's desperate for his glory that's desperate this morning come on I'm desperate for you Jesus I'm lost without you I'm lost without you I need you to hide me in your presence hey hide me in your presence yes oh hide me Hide me, God. Hide me. Hide me. Hide me. I need you to hide me. I need you to hide me, God. Hey, I need you to hide me under your shadow, God. Under your shadow, God. He's hiding you now. Yes, God. He's hiding you now. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We will honor you. And we will glorify you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We will honor you, Jesus. Hey, we will honor you, Jesus. We will honor you, Jesus. We will honor you. 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 We will honor you, Jesus. Come on, worship Him. We worship you. Thank God for Pastor CJ, uh, just for letting God use him uh, in worship. Uh, listen, I want to give you the opportunity to partner with us. We're, we're uh, a new church planted in North Minneapolis, and it's our heart's desire to serve uh, this community with all of our hearts and form relationships and be with uh, the community uh, and, and uh, be attentive to them uh, their needs and what God has called us to do and connect with our brothers and sisters, show them love. Uh, I want you to know that you can be a part of God's move that's about to happen through the Fruit Church in North Minneapolis. And the way in which you can do that is by partnering with us. Your $5, your $10, your $20, whatever you give is going to be used for the kingdom, for the work of the ministry uh, that we've been called to in North. So I want you to ask God uh, and, and let your heart be open to uh, giving uh, this Sunday morning. And some of you might want to make long-term commitments 
Uh, we're getting ready to go on some campaigns where we're going to be raising funds that are going to help us uh, staff people and put people in place uh, that will uh, be dedicated wholly to serving uh, the community. Listen, I want to send you to a screen that's going to tell you ways in which you can give. And right after that, I'll be back with the Word of God. our mother text for our sermon resurrecting love from the book of St. John the 15th chapter the 13th through the 15th verses again uh, reading our mother text from St. John the 13th through the 15th verses and this is in the King James Version it says greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends ye are my friends if ye do whatever whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Thank God for the reading of the word. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray and ask him to be with me and give me the strength uh, and also to bless the sermon uh, as it is shared. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We ask God that you would be with us uh, as I share the word and those that hear it be with us, oh God, um, and help uh, me, Lord, to articulate your word in the way that it can be understood and in a way that it can reach and touch the heart and minds of those that hear it. We thank you, God, for your great sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today, friends, I'm going to be sharing uh, this Resurrection Sunday, a sermon entitled Resurrecting Love, Love That Keeps On Resurrecting. And I, I, want, to, I want to talk about that today uh, because uh, Jesus uh, resurrected on one day. Uh, the day after the Sabbath, one Sunday morning, according to the Gospel writer John. Uh, he resurrected on one Sunday morning. However, uh, his love, that act, that one act of resurrection, keeps resurrecting in our lives day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, decade by decade. Uh, that love, century to century, has continued to resurrect in the lives of men. And I want to talk about resurrecting love today. I don't want to be long because we're going to be going into communion immediately after uh, this particular uh, sermon. Uh, so I want to talk about resurrecting love today. What a great sacrifice given to us by God uh, in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. So uh, in 2012, the Writer's Relief, uh, which engages a large community of community of authors asks its audience to define what love means, uh, especially as it relates to how they display love in, in the body of a story. An excerpt from that article uh, uh, speaks to love. Uh, I love this excerpt. It talks about uh, what love, what they found out from love. Under that heading, it says, what did we find out about love? Uh, and I love what it says. It says this. It said, a passion is far and away the most vital element of a memorable love story. It's not enough for a character to merely desire love. It must seem necessary in some way. 
Passion must be so compelling that love becomes as vital as the character as air, to the characters as air. I'm going to read that one more again. One more, uh, one more again. I'm going to read that one more time. One more again. That's that Southern mix. I'm going to read that one more time. Passion is far and away the most vital element of a memorable love story. It's not enough for the character to merely desire love. It must seem necessary in some way. Passion must be so compelling that love becomes as vital to the characters as air. And we know Jesus is not simply a character. He was a real man. But the story of his passion uh, and his love towards man has been told on every continent in the earth city by city and uh, uh, country by country, year by year, even those countries that do not accept or allow the gospel to be preached, they still are aware in some ways many in those countries are aware of the name Jesus. Uh, in 2004, Mel Gibson, you might know who Mel Gibson is, he, he, he was in one of my favorite movies, The, the Patriot. Uh, and uh, I love I love those types of movies. Uh, probably next to uh, Russell Crowe, he's one of my uh, you know he's one of my favorite uh, uh, characters in uh, in Hollywood. In 2004, Mel Gibson directed what we knew what we know as the Passion of Christ. He he he, he directed this movie. It was the third highest grossing movie of that year. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how much money it gained because it's not about the money. But the film uh, has been seen worldwide, and was and, and although the writer uh, deviated a little bit from from the portions of the Bible uh, history account of the story of Jesus, uh, the film perhaps uh, is the the greatest record uh, provided uh, to give a detailed, visible depiction of what it was for Jesus to suffer and die for us. Uh, perhaps no other uh, film has, has depicted it uh, in a deeper way, in a more meaningful way than Mel Gibson's film did. In fact, out of every time I've seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, uh, there's something about seeing it depicted that, that brings tears to my eyes, just knowing uh, who Jesus was. The story of Jesus has been told for centuries over and over again. And today, I just want to add to the millions of people who have told the story uh, and to the millions of people who will hear the story today, no doubt uh, from uh, cities worldwide will hear uh, the gospel preached, uh, the story, the resurrection of the death, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ today. Some people are going to take you from the resurrection, uh, from, from, the, from the birth all the way to the resurrection in their sermons, and some people are going to take you just to the resurrection, and, and some people are going to give you uh, uh, all details related uh, to what things that transpired uh, from Jesus' birth all the way to his death, burial, and resurrection. But today, I'm going to focus on that resurrection, that love that keeps resurrecting. Um, I entitled this sermon, uh, love resurrecting for a reason. I, it was a reason I entitled this sermon that way. And I want to talk to you a little bit about why. There are a few things I want to go over in Scripture to talk because we have to, we have to first really uh, dive a little bit and not go too far, but dive a little bit into a couple of questions that come up when we talk about Jesus. And, and that is, who was Jesus and why did he come? Who was Jesus and why did he come? Number one, I want you to know that Jesus was God manifested in the, script, in the scriptures. The scriptures share with us that Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. Uh, it is in uh, John, St. John, the 10th chapter, uh, the first chapter, the 10th through the 14th verses, says uh, Jesus, he was the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Uh, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, uh, nor of the will, the, the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They were born of God. 
And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Now, we know that Isaiah, the eagle eye prophet, as he is surnamed, Isaiah uh, is nicknamed the eagle eye prophet because uh, some 400 years before Jesus even entered on the, uh, on the scene, we, we find Isaiah in the ninth chapter saying, oh, man, I can see uh, I can see a great king coming. The government's going to be on his shoulders. His name is going to be called Mighty. He's going to be a counselor, a mighty God. Uh, and he's going to save us. He's going to save us from our sins. Uh, we, we can also look at John, uh, the 6th chapter, the 38 through the 40th verses. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus tells us that he is not earthly, that he is part of God's deity. And if we look at St. John, the 6th chapter, the 38 through the 40th verses, it tells us this. He says, for I came down from heaven. That is one powerful statement. Jesus says, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Recognizing that even though he was present in earth, there was a deity uh, still in heaven keeping all things in function. There was still a God above him, but he was a part of that God manifested in the flesh. He was a part of the Godhead. And while he was here on earth ministering to his disciples, he talks about the Holy Spirit, which is the other part of that Godhead. Jesus says, I came down from heaven. Uh, and this is the Father's will, which he had sent me, that all of which, li listen to what he said. This, this is his will that he sent me. What did he send me to do? He sent me to redeem man. I came for a reason. Who was Jesus? He was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Now watch this. In the 40th verse, he says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in that last day. Oh, my goodness. This, this is what Jesus came for. He came. Number two, he came. Why, why did he come? Why, would he come? why did he come? Who was he? We, we answered that. He was the son of God. God manifested in the flesh, uh, the holy uh, uh, lamb of God. Who, number two, why did he come? Why did he come? He came to be a sacrificial offering for man's sin. Now, some have titled uh, Adam's uh, sin as, as uh, iniquity, his failure, when Adam was told to do a certain thing, dis he disobeyed God and ate uh, fruit, uh, the forbidding fruit. Uh, he was cast out from the garden. But Jesus, Jesus, that great sacrificial lamb, that covering for our sin, if you go back and read Genesis 3 and 21, God, even in his anger, the grace of God shows up after Adam and Eve recognize that they're naked. Genesis 3.21 reveals to us that Jesus uh, shows up as a covering in Scripture. The Bible says that, that God, when they knew they were naked, the Bible said that God, after God cast them from the garden, he covered them. He made them leaves and covered Adam and Eve. That was a representation, friends, of Jesus Christ covering our sins. Uh, see, the law that God gave Moses uh, required, see, after Adam's sin, God had to find a way to bring his people back into communion with him continually because sin separates man from God. When we look in uh, the book of Leviticus, the fourth chapter, the first through the fifth verses, we will find uh, in the law that God had given Moses to have a sin offering. There must be a sin offering. He gave instructions that the priest were to take a lamb that was without blemish and sacrifice that lamb before God in replacement for people's sin or atonement for sin. Uh, so Jesus uh, came to be our atonement, our great sacrifice for our sins. Philippians 2, 5 through 8 says, it tells us to let this mind be in us, let this mind be in us, who being made in the form of God, talking about Jesus, Christ Jesus, which was in Christ Jesus, the same mind. He was made in the form of God, thought it not robbery to, robbery to be equal with God. He didn't make a reputation for himself. Uh, he, didn't take on the, he took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the likeness of men, being found in this 
fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross. And so uh, uh, Paul, as he's writing to the Philippians, church emphasizes that we should have the mind of Christ being willing to be obedient to him through sacrifice. And Jesus himself was our model. He, he took that mindset on. He came, number three, to give us life. The words of Jesus recorded in the gospel writer John, uh, the 10th chapter, uh, it, uh, it says uh, a common scripture that is used, the thief comes not but the uh, kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly. He says, I am the good shepherd, and the shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. So in that, we see that he came to give life, and he came to give up his own life so that you and I might experience life in Jesus. Uh, we, we need to know that that sacrifice that God made, uh, also, number four, he came because he loved us. He came because he loved us. Listen to what Romans, the fifth chapter in the eighth verse says. It says, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Uh, you know what? It, uh, we, we may not see somebody else die, even, even if for another righteous person, somebody that's a good person. It's very scarcely that we see somebody give up their life for somebody else. But, but he said this, he said, uh, just think about if a good man that some would even dare to die for a good person. He said, but God commended his love toward us in that while you and I were yet sinners, we, while you and I were yet lawless, while you and I were separated from God, Christ died for us. He died to redeem us unto our God. Uh, but but D Jesus, I, I want to talk about this because Jesus did not just come to die for our sins. Uh, in his resurrection was the fulfillment of God's love towards us. In his resurrection was the fulfillment of God's love towards us. Number one, he reclaimed us as sons and daughters. It is in 1 John, the third chapter, the first through the third verses, it says, Behold, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon you and I, that we should now be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, you, you are now the sons of God, uh, and, and it, it, it doesn't appear. You, you, you don't know what the end is going to be. You don't, you don't know what, what it's going to look like in the future. But you know what we do know? We know that when Jesus shall reappear, when he shall come back, we shall be like him. We're going to see him as he is. And every man, every woman that has the hope of Jesus in them, purifies themselves even as he is pure. Uh, number two, he came, uh, that he, he gives us victory over sin. His, his death gave us victory over sin. Don't you know that we needed to get the victory over sin? Uh, the sin, uh, the sin, see the law could not do it alone. The law could not do it alone. We needed God to help us and to give us victory over that sin. Listen to what he says. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through the 58 verse, he says, O death, where is thy sting? And O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is what? The law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, brother, I want to be encourage you to be stead fast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that the labor that you're doing is not in vain in the Lord. He tells us that, that therefore, beloved brethren, don't, don't, don't faint. Be steadfast. Stay focused on God because you've got to know that your labor is not in vain. God gives us victory through Jesus Christ. Love keeps resurrecting. I, I want to read this in uh, in the book of uh, Ephesians where he, where he tells us, he says, the law couldn't do it alone, friends. It, the law uh, was weak. He tells us this. He says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through what? The flesh. 
It was weak through the flesh. God, God had to send his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to do what? Condemn sin in the flesh. That's the way that God had to handle the situation. He had to help us. Uh, he had to condemn sin right where it was in the flesh because the law was not weak enough. See, the law tied us to the flesh. When we sin, we break the law. Uh, and somebody might ask, and many have asked this question, says, why would God give the law knowing that man could not live up to it? See, you've got to understand that everything uh, already existed in God, including his law. He was perfect, and so what his, was his law. But sin was what made it impossible for man to ever live up to the law. God, knowing this, uh, realizing that he had to do something to make it possible uh, before, before Jesus came and died, there had to be continual sacrifices. Not only that, you were not allowed to go to God for yourself for your sins. You had to call on the priests and you had to call on the elders and get them, uh, those Levites, I'm sorry, those sons of the, Le the Levi sons who were priests that were dedicated to the work of the Lord. They had the responsibility of coming to, uh, of coming to the people at the time of atonement uh, and the, the unblemished lamb had to be taken and sacrificed before the Lord uh, on the altar by the hands of those priests in order to get atonement for our sins. Oh, man, but we have Jesus now. We have, we have such a high priest. I want to read this to you because I, I love that when Jesus got up, that love, it, it, that moment of resurrection was not just at that moment, but resurrection keeps on happening. See, friends, every time you make a mistake on God, love keeps resurrecting. Every time you fall, love keeps lifting you up again. The love of God keeps on giving you another chance. That's how great God's resurrection, that moment uh, that Jesus got up out of the grave that wasn't just for that moment. It was for generations to come, for me and you, for our grandparents, our great-grandparents, and those that have gone before us, and for those that are yet to come. That love continues to resurrect in order for them to be forgiven of their sins. Watch this. I want to give you this verse in Hebrews 10, 12 through 17. It says, but this man, after he had offered, this man talking about Jesus, the Hebrew writer, after he had offered one sacrifice, one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, the scripture again recognizing who Jesus was, uh, uh, the deity, part of the deity of God, the essence of who God's spirit is. Jesus is a part of that living spirit, which is God. From henceforth respecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness unto us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those, those, those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart and their minds will I write in them. And their sins and iniquity will I remember no more. Friends, what an awesome thing that we can have uh, a resurrecting love. And now Jesus, as, as great as he is, he is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, continually uh, asking God for relief, relieving us of our sins. Now we have an advocate with the Father, set down at his right hand. And his love every day continues to resurrect in our lives. I didn't have time, friends, to tell the whole story of Jesus. I just wanted to talk about, for a little minute, that resurrecting love. Think about how many times God has rescued you. Think about that love in your life that keeps on resurrecting. Over and over again, think about how much he loves you. That was the reason why he came and why he died for your sins. I want to pray with one who may be watching me right now. You may say to yourself, I know that God resurrected in my life. I see his love continuously to resurrect. No matter how many times I've gone astray and how many mistakes I've made, his love keeps resurrecting 
in my life. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those that are watching that say, I, I, I don't want nothing to do with that Jesus. I, I, I don't, uh, he, he's a hoax. I want to pray for you. I want, I want to ask God if you would take a moment to just keep watching. And I'm going to ask God to reveal himself to you. I'm going to ask his spirit to come into your heart. And that you may see Jesus in a whole new light. I know some have presented him the wrong way. But this Jesus, the one, the model for all men who was recorded in the history of the Bible, this Jesus was the Son of God manifested in the flesh whose love keeps resurrecting for you. Father, I pray for my friends that are watching right now. God, I, I first want to ask that you will reveal to them the resurrecting love that is, that is continually showing up in their lives your hand of mercy. We thank you, God, that, that you sacrifice all for us. You came and you died for us on the cross that day. But God, you didn't leave the story there. Love died and it resurrected out of the grave in order that we might have that, that, that great day, that, that great revival in our spirits and that great reconnection to our Creator. Father, we thank you. We praise you now. We give your name the glory. I pray salvation in the lives of them that don't believe, or them that have gone astray, or them that may have been hurt uh, by the church and other things in their lives. I pray, Father, you forgive them for all of their sins. Bring them back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, I, I want to quickly um, go into communion uh, because I want to share um, that today. Today happens to also be First Sunday. And uh, every First Sunday, we celebrate the uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, by having Holy Communion. Uh, and today, I'm going to... Uh, have communion with you, but uh, typically we read uh, Matthew, the 26th chapter, and we read uh, uh, in the book of Corinthians, we read uh, where Paul gives an account uh, to the church at Corinth concerning how they should observe communion. Um, but today I want to read a different text as we get ready to observe communion. Uh, wherever you are, if you have a fruit of the vine juice in your fridge and a cracker or whatever you have, you can partake in communion today. What a great sacrifice of our Lord. But today I want to read Hebrews, the ninth chapter and the 19th verse, uh, starting at the 19th verse. I want to use this uh, text of scripture as we enter communion today. It says, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of cows and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and he sprinkled both the book and the people saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are given by, by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of the blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things, the patterns of things, and the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves, which with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of, of the true Christ is now entered. I'm sorry. It's not entered into the holy places made with hands. So he's not entered into that tabernacle uh, that was made or that building that was made uh, by man uh, with the figures of, of the true, but, it, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for you and I, for us. Not, uh, nor yet that he, uh, should offer himself often as a high priest enter it. Uh, he doesn't have to go back and forth over and over again as the other priests do, 
For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And, it is, and as, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear them that look for him, or to bear the sins of many, I'm sorry. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Christ no longer, uh, because of Christ's sacrifice, uh, we no longer have to go to those who, who uh, are high priests and ask them. We don't have to go to the confession booth. We can go boldly to the throne of grace for ourselves because Christ was made as that perfect sacrifice. And now he's gone up into heaven sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's daily, the billions of people in the world, he's daily advocating. His love is there at the throne of God, continuously resurrecting, reminding God the Father of just how much he loves us. I'm going to take the bread as we remember our Lord. Always remember Jesus. Always remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may eat. And this is the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. You may drink. God bless you, friends. Wherever you are, go on and enjoy this great Resurrection Sunday with your family and your friends. Hug somebody and tell them you love them. God bless.